Transformers and the self-attention are powerful architectures to enable large language models. But we need a mechanism for them to understand the order of the different tokens we input into the models. The position encoding is that mechanism. There are many ways to encode the positions of the input tokens, but let me show you the way it was developed in the Attention is All You Need paper. Let's get into it. So let's dig into the position embedding. So here we have the token embedding, so it could be a word or token embedding. And here we have the position embedding. So the word embedding or the token embedding is going to have as many rows that they are words or tokens in our vocabulary. And the size of the different vectors is going to be what we used to call the hidden size. Here we call it D model, the model dimension. For the position embedding, we have as many rows that there are possible number of input in the input sequence or output sequence if this is a position embedding of the decoder. So the size of the position embedding, the number of rows of the position embedding define the maximum number of words or tokens that we can input in the decoder or the encoder. The number of rows in the position embedding is called the context size. This is what limits the amount of text we can put into a LLM. This is the only element in the model that is blocking us from having a possible infinite amount of input tokens within the model. Let's look at the mechanics of how the different words get processed. Let's start with the first element in the input sequence. So the first element is how. The word how will have its related vector in the token embedding, and it will have its related vector in the position embedding. The word how will always have the same vector in the token embedding, but its related vector in the position embedding will depend on its position in the sentence. Here, the word how is at the first position of the input sequence. So we're taking the first vector in the position embedding. We add the two resulting vectors and we get one new vector. Again, we are looking at the word R. The word R will have its related vector in the token embedding. It's always the same. But because it is at the second position in the input sequence, we are using the second vector in the position embedding. And we're adding the two, and this results into another vector. We do the same thing for the word U. It has its related vector in the token embedding. And we are using the third vector in the position embedding because it is at the third position of the input sequence. We add the two and we get a new vector. We do the same thing for the word doing. We get its related vector in the token embedding and we get the fourth vector in the position embedding and we add them together and we get a new vector. And we do that until the end for the last input in the input sequence. We get its related vector in the token embedding and we get the fifth vector in the position embedding. We add them together and we get a resulting vector. So why does it matter? Why do we need this position embedding? So let's assume that we have an input sequence that is how are you doing? And we could have an input sequence with the same words, but in a different order. For example, doing question mark are you how? So those are exactly the same words, but in a different order. What is important when I use the position embedding is that the resulting hidden state that I will get for a specific ordering of the words in the input sequence will be completely different from the hidden state that I will get for a different ordering of the same words. And more importantly, when I feed this into the attention layer, the different self-attentions that I will get for the different hidden states will be completely different, which means that the model will understand interactions between the words completely differently depending on their positions within the input sequence. So this position embedding is critical to make sure that the model understand not only the semantic of the different words, but also the order of the different words and how they are impacting the words that we want to predict. There are many ways to compute the position embedding. We could learn the position embedding, but the way it was suggested in the attention is all you need paper is by using this simple formula. Pause here is the position within the position embedding. So if I look at the first vector, pause will be equal to zero if I start to index at zero. 
i here is the element within the vector. So here, if I look at the first element, i will be equal to 0. And here, the second element, i will be equal to 1 if I start to index at 0. D model is a dimension of the vectors in the position embedding. And we alternate between the different elements in each vector between sine and cosine function. So here we have 10,000. So this is a number that has been chosen because it is large. This means that the evolution of the values of the position embedding within one colon will change very gradually. And we alternate between sine and cosine when we move from one element in the vector to the next. Using the sine and cosine functions with different frequencies allow for the model to generate distinct embeddings for different positions. Each dimension of the position embeddings capture a different aspect of the position, and the alternating use of the sine and cosine functions ensures that neighboring dimensions contribute differently to the overall encoding. The sine and cosine functions are periodic, which helps the model to understand that positions in a sequence wrap around. This is very important for tasks where the relative distance between the positions matter. The periodicity ensures that the model can capture dependencies that span across different positions in a sequence. The combination of sine and cosine functions provides smooth transitions between positions, and this is crucial for the model to generalize well to sequences of varying lengths and to capture both short-range and long-range dependencies. The scaling factor 10,000 has been found to be quite effective, and it helps with the smooth transitions between the different positions within the embedding. So let's look, for example, at the first element of the first row. So the first position is 0, pose equals 0, so I have a 0 here, and the first element in the vector is 0 as well. So i equals 0, and I have 0 here. Sine of 0 equals 0. Let's look at the second element in the first vector. So we have position again that is equal to 0. In the case of odd i's, we use the value of the previous i. So add the second element in the vector, i equal to 1. This is odd. So I need to use i that is equal to 0. So I put 2 times 0. This is equal to 0. And cosine of 0 is equal to 1. I now alternate between sine, cosine, and sine. The position in the vector is 2. This is the second i, so I use sine because the i is even. The position is still 0 because I'm still in the first vector, so this is 0 here. And this time i is equal to 2, so 2 times 2 equals 4 because d model 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is equal to 5. It's 4 divided by 5. But sine of 0 is still equal to 0. So let's look at the second vector. In the second vector, the position is now equal to 1. If I look at the first element of that vector, the position in that vector is 0. So i equal to 0. And 10,000 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this is equal to sine of 1. Again, let's look at the third vector. In the third vector, the position is equal to 2, and the i is still equal to 0. So this whole thing would be equal to sine of 2. Let's look at the second element in the second vector. In the second vector, the position is equal to 1, but because the index of i here is odd, so this is going to be i equal to 1, I need to alternate and use a cosine function, and I still need to use the value of the previous i. So i equal to 0. 2 times 0 is going to be equal to 0, and I end up with a cosine of 1 here. Let's look at the third element in the third vector. Because i is equal to 2 here, it is even, and I need to use a sine function. The position is 2, so I need to put 2 here. And i is equal to 2, so 2 times 2 equal to 4, 
and 5 is the dimension of the model. Let's look here. We are the fifth position within the vector. The index i is going to be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is even. I need to use the sine function. If I look at the position in that vector, this is a sixth vector. So the index of the position is going to be equal to 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So pose equal to 5 here. Because i is equal to 4, 2 times 4 equal to 8, and 5 is a dimension of the model. So what's happening is that when I look at a specific colon in that embedding, I just follow the natural progression of a sine or cosine function. The periodicity of that function is defined by the position in that vector. So the period of that function is going to be equal to 2 pi 10,000 to the power 2i divided by d model. This is a somewhat a complex formula, but that means that if I look at the last element in the vector, then i is going to be equal approximately to d model, and so the period is going to be equal to 2 pi 10,000 square. This is in the last element of the vector, but if I look at the first element of the vector, i is going to be equal to 0, so the period is going to be equal to 2 pi. So the period depends on the position in the vector. So we have different gradual progression of the sine function depending on the position within the vector. So we alternate between cosine and sine. So if we start with the first element in that vector, when we move to the next position in that same vector, we basically go from the sine function to the cosine function. So this gives us a very different value. If I move from the second position to the third position, then I move back to the sine function in the next position in that sine function. Again, if I move to the next position, I alternate from sine function to cosine function, and I just take the cosine of the same value. If I move to the next position here, I just alternate from cosine to sine, and I just move to the next position as a sine function. So this position embedding provides us with a set of vectors that we didn't need to learn. We could have had a position embedding that is learnable. There are some models where the position embedding is learnable instead of being hardcoded by a function with the cosine and sine. But in the attention is all you need paper, they found that hard coding the position embedding provides similar results that if you had to learn a position embedding. So this saves in computation and provides us with a way to distinguish between the different words when they come at different places in the input sequence.